kids, it's winter time. I'm kind of cold, but the dogs are plenty warm. They've been growing their winter coat for the last month. They have a nice furry coat underneath the long hair. So they love it cold. This is their favorite season. Thank you for sending all those questions in. I can answer some of them, but we'll get some other mushers to answer a bunch of them too. But they were good questions. Uh, one of the first ones that I, that I thought was interesting was, so what kind of dogs are they in the first place? You could try training your poodle or your Dalmatian, but the Huskies have an instinct to pull and it's so much easier to have a dog that wants to pull. So much easier. So I would advise starting out with a Husky if you can. I have five dogs and they, some of them have kind of goofy names. There's usually a story behind every, every dog's name. My oldest dog is Big Boy and he, we called him the panda puppy because he looks like a panda bear. He's black and white and he's big. And then the next oldest are Frosty and Too Sweet, they're sisters. And when Too Sweet was born, she was so pretty, everyone said, oh, she's so, she's too sweet or she's too cute. So I just named her Too Sweet. Too Sweet, hello. This yellow dog, the yellow color comes from the Tanana dogs. They have a lot of reddish young, yellow dogs. Her uh, father was from Eagle and they have some red dogs up there too. And Frosty, her sister, is my lead dog. She's the mother of my two other dogs, Smokey and Chunky Monkey. Frosty, the, the mother dog here, still has chunks of her old fur from last year on her hind legs, but she's growing. Come here, Frosty. 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 Yes, let me see your old fur there. There you go. Now, how did a dog get a name like Chunky Monkey, you might ask? He's not fat, he's very thin usually, but when he was a puppy, he was a chubby little puppy. And in the summer, I invite people to come over and meet my dogs, and some kids named him Chunky Monkey. And it just stuck, and it was kind of funny, so I call him Chunky Monkey, and he comes to it, so. And Smokey was kind of gray when he was a puppy, and I've always loved that name, Smokey, and just wanted a dog named Smokey. <coughs> Smokey's my youngest dog. He thinks he's a puppy, but he's <coughs> four years old. But he acts like a puppy, and he's so happy to be loose and running around, kicking up his heels. I'm a dog. I'm just a dog. I'm a big Alaska Husky old dog. I don't do no tricks. I don't fetch no sticks. I'm a big Alaska Husky old dog. I pull a sled, and then I shed. Sometimes I sleep on Mama's feather tick bed. Well, I'm rough and I'm tough. And I'm running in the buff, oh yeah. I'm rough and I'm tough and I'm running in the buff. I'm a big Alaska Husky old dog. How do you pick a lead dog? The way I pick a lead dog is when I have a litter of puppies. The one that responds to me the most, it'll stay with me and they'll, they learn their name first. They come when I call them. That's a good sign that they're putting two and two together, and that's what I want in a good lead dog, and one that likes to be with me especially. They need to be able to respond to commands, pull straight ahead. The one that follows me around everywhere, and if I lay down on the grass, they jump on me and want to play. And um, If you had a whole team of lead dogs, that would be fine too, because sometimes your lead dog gets sick or gets lame, and you need to put another replacement up in front, so it's good to have more than one lead dog. This is Juno. She's one of our best lead dogs. We pick lead dogs like to like, as I said, if they're like, first we start them in wheel. And if they like pull straight ahead when they're in wheel, we try them in lead. And if they do good, and, if, and we keep practicing them with them in lead. And if they get super good at it, that means, they're, that means we'll start having them in lead. Start, start using them as a lead dog, like Juno. But the most important quality in a sled dog is a dog that loves to pull sleds. You can't make them do it for anything in the world. It's got to be something they want to do for you. And that's called an instinct in the dogs. They just have a natural desire to love pulling sleds. Puppies, when they're just little, the first time you put them by a sled, they know what to do, and they just do it for you. How do you How train, do you train dogs? dogs? We just have vocal commands. We say G to turn to the right, Paw to turn to the left. I say, whoa, to stop. And I don't want to disappoint you kids, but we never say mush to the dogs. Mush comes from the French word marche, to go ahead. Maybe Sergeant Preston was French Canadian. Maybe he said mush, but nobody does today. 
The command that most mushers use is the word hike, H-I-K-E. It's a nice sharp word. It doesn't rhyme with anything. Uh, and then you don't want to say that until you're really ready to go because sometimes they're ready to go before I'm ready to go and I'm tying up the sled and suddenly they take off and I just barely grab the sled and I'm dragging along <laughs> behind it. And I, I'm hollering, whoa, whoa, whoa. But if they're chasing a squirrel or a rabbit or something, their instincts mean that they want to chase animals more than they want to do what I say. And then I just hang on as long as I can and when I can't hang on anymore, I let go and off they go. Sometimes they just go 20 feet and they stop. Sometimes they go for miles. And if they're close to home, if I'm training around home, they usually just end up at home before I get there. It's sort of scary. Like Even the first time I run like three dogs or something is scary. Because I mean, I've never run, ran that many dogs. But most of the time, if we're like, if it's their first time, we like give them like one dog or so, in case they fall off or like, or they can slow them down easier. But I've also taught them a command called come haw. That means go to the left haw and make a U-turn and come back to me. And they have saved my life that way when they've come back and I can get back on the sled. I'd probably have them use one dog for, at the beginning and have it be a um, reliable dog. And it's so much fun to see this little cuddly puppy turn into a great big strong dog that would save your life in a storm. And uh, they just love to go mushing as much as I do. We're both passionate about it. I would say it started with my dad for sure. He built most of our sleds we used. And when Hazel started racing, he was like, well, I'll make her a sled that's fast. <laughs> I think my first time dog mushing on my own was about when I was four. And my first time racing, I think, was um, when I was four and a half or five. And I fell off a lot, probably. <laughs> um, then I got into, into the hobby of racing dogs, and now I race three or two or three. At first I started with one dog, and then I started with two, and then I, now I'm running three in races. I would say there's three generations of pushers. Um, when I was born, my parents lived on the Tozetna River, north of Tanana. Um, it's 70 river miles or 40 trail miles north of Tanana. Yeah, it's a, it's, an, it's a very unique way of life and you get to, you know, you get to move around by dog team. That's your car. What do you do, do to, to stay, stay warm? warm? So this is a snowsuit. Most of the time I use it when we're going on, on long mushing trips or if it's super cold out. I also wear a fur hat sometimes or a, or a different warm hat like this one. And we always take headlamps in case like, in case something happens on the trail. And just, it's helpful. And sometimes we also wear fur mittens if it's really cold out. We also wear neck warmers too, like the one I'm wearing right here. This is my mom's. Most of the time we wear warm snow boots like these. These aren't my warmest ones I have though. I have more warmer ones. And we also wear layer, at least two layers of warm socks. Okay. How do the dogs stay, stay warm? They have these houses and in the nighttime they sleep in them and they have hay inside them. <laughs> And we put insulation in some of them when we build them. Sometimes dogs wear booties. They're like socks. They're like socks. If they're like their foot is hurt or something, sometimes you put booties on them when they're running. Sled dogs have like a thicker, a thicker fur under, underneath the long fur, and then over that, that keeps them insulated, and then over that they have this long, this long shaggy fur. <laughs> On sprint dogs, their fur is like much, is much thinner, and, I mean, it's, it's much shorter, and not as warm, and not as thick. Sometimes, whenever it's super cold, we put dog coats on them. I like coats for dogs.
I'm a dog, just a dog. I'm a big Alaska husky old dog. I don't do no tricks. I don't fetch no sticks. I'm a big Alaska husky old dog. I pull a sled and then I shed. Sometimes I sleep up on this feather dick bed. Well, I'm rough and I'm tough and I'm running in the buff. I'm a big Alaska husky old dog.